In this broadcast, we discuss the rebuilding of the Jewish Third Temple. We'll discover how the Antichrist is like Antiochus Epiphanes, and we'll discuss the Islamic agenda to establish the Temple as the seat of the Islamic Caliph. Good day. Most people have no idea how the last days will start. But the Bible specifically speaks about a period of seven year tribulation before Jesus appears from heaven. Biblical scholars know that the seven year tribulation will begin with a peace treaty signed between Israel and the Arabs. And that the initiator or mediator of this peace treaty will be the Antichrist himself, who appears as a man of peace and a promoter of peace in the Middle East. But in truth, he is a man of war, who will use peace as the Trojan horse, by promising Israel safety and security, for seven years. Most people miss the fact, that the Bible says, this covenant will be with many. Not just Israel. Daniel 9.27 says, That ruler, will have a firm agreement, with many people for seven years. Many people, is not just Israel and Palestine. This agreement must include other nations as well. Most likely, the Arab nations, which surround Israel. These are possibly the many people, being spoken of here. Part of the peace treaty, may even be the recognition, of Israel as a nation. And the Antichrist, will be the one who confirms this agreement, between these many nations, and Israel. Some scholars believe, that one of the main points of this peace treaty, will be that the Arabs, allow the Jews, to rebuild Solomon's temple, on Mount Moriah. The only problem, preventing the third temple's construction, is the fact that it is currently being occupied, by the Islamic Dome of the Rock. Built over what Jews believe to be the stone altar, of Abraham. According to some biblical scholars, the third temple could be built, right next to the Dome of the Rock. This is based on the theory of Dr. Asher Kaufman, regarding the location of the Eastern Gate. That the Muslim Dome of the Rock, was actually built on what the Bible refers to, as the Court of the Gentiles. This belief, is based on Revelation 11.1. Which states that the rebuilding of the Third Temple, is not to include, the section of the Temple Mount, known as the Court of the Gentiles. Therefore, they believe that the Third Temple, and the Dome of the Rock, could stand side, by side. The Bible is very clear that a third temple, will be standing on Mount Moriah in the last days. And the only way that this could possibly occur, is if the Arabs, granted Israel permission, to begin construction. But this has not stopped the Temple Institute, from preparing the vessels and blueprints, for the third temple's construction. Here are some of the vessels which have already been prepared. They include many types of gold, silver and copper vessels. These are vessels which the Jewish priests require to perform the daily rituals and offerings made to God. Silver trumpets for the announcement of Jewish feast days and even a reconstruction of David's harp. The seven candle menorah and the golden crown prepared for the high priest has also been made ready. Inscribed with the words, Holy unto the Lord. According to Exodus 28:36. Surprisingly, there has been a recent increase, in the call from prominent Muslims, to see Solomon's temple rebuilt. This is quite a shocking statement, seeing that the majority of Muslims, are against Jews even setting a foot, on the Temple Mount. At first glance it appears as a gesture of good faith, on the part of these Muslims. But, the Bible reveals a sinister agenda, behind their call to see Solomon's temple rebuilt. If given the opportunity and Islamic approval, the Jews may very well opt to build their temple right beside the Dome of the Rock. And this will probably be the most likely scenario that we will see the Dome and the Third Temple stand side by side on the Temple Mount, but at the cost of initiating the seven year tribulation. Once the Jews have finished rebuilding their Third Temple, they will once again instate the Jewish animal sacrifices. 1 Thessalonians 5:3 For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. The Bible tells us that Israel will say to themselves, Finally, we have peace and safety. But this peace, 
as with all treaties signed with Arabs, will not last. For Muslims are taught by the Quran itself, to lie to infidels and create false treaties, all for the purpose of eventually getting the upper hand. It's called Tukhiya, and Hugna. This concept is foreign to the West, who have no idea that the Quran teaches Muslims to lie, and to never honor treaties with infidels. Now it makes perfect sense why the Antichrist breaks his seven year treaty, after just three and a half years, and attacks and conquers Jerusalem. Because he is Islamic. But let's give more proof to our assertion that the Antichrist is Muslim. The King James Bible says the Antichrist covers the third temple with abominations. Daniel 9 27. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Abominations in the Bible were always connected to religion. Abominations to God, are idols, symbols of another God. Remember Antiochus Epiphanes. Many biblical scholars, see him as a forerunner of the little horn Antichrist, mentioned in the book of Daniel. After Antiochus conquered Egypt, he then surprise attacked, and conquered, Jerusalem. Declaring himself to be God made manifest. He also put a statue of his god Zeus in the temple, and rededicated the temple, to Zeus. Outlawing Jewish religious rites and traditions, and ordering that Zeus be worshipped, as the supreme god. Look again at the next verse and recognize there is a religion to this invading army. Because they take away the Jewish sacrifice, because of what? Transgression. And a host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of, transgression and it cast down the truth to the ground. And it practiced, and prospered. Daniel 8 12. The Bible makes it plain that the Jewish sacrifice is a transgression or offense to this invading army. But transgression against who? Against their God, Allah. Muslims limit Jewish access, to the Temple Mount, in case a Jew prays there. And many Jews have tried to sacrifice there, which has caused terrible backlash, by the Muslims. Look at why, this army has assembled. The Bible says they attack Jerusalem, because they are against, the daily sacrifice. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice. So who is against the Jews sacrificing on the Temple Mount? The Muslims. The Muslims assemble their armies, against the daily sacrifice, because the Muslims claim, that the Temple Mount is holy to them. And a Jewish sacrifice, they see as defiling it. So they will take away the Jewish sacrifice, because they see it, as a transgression against Allah. And just like Antiochus, rededicated the Jewish temple, to Zeus. So too will the Islamic Antichrist, rededicate the third temple, to his god Allah. By making it a mosque. And he will place on its pinnacle, the well-known symbol of Allah, by which all mosques are identified. This is the religious abomination, of which Daniel spoke. The awful horror, or abomination which causes desolation, will be placed on the highest point of the temple, and will remain there until the one who put it there, meets the end which God has prepared for him. The Bible tells those in Judea, exactly what to do, when this Islamic army attacks Jerusalem and enters the third temple. Mark 13 14. But when you see the abomination of desolation, standing where it should not be, let the reader understand. Then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. The one on the roof must not come down or go inside, to take anything out of his house. The one in the field, must not turn back, to get his cloak. Woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing their babies in those days. Pray that it may not be in winter. For in those days, there will be suffering. Unlike anything that has happened, from the beginning of the creation, that God created until now, or ever will happen. And if the Lord had not cut short those days, no one, would be saved. But because of the elect, whom he chose, he has cut them short. The book of Daniel tells us, that God will only allow the Islamic Antichrist, to rule 1290 days. From the time he sets up the abomination. When Antiochus conquered Jerusalem, he declared himself Zeus made manifest. Some believe that the Antichrist, is an atheist, who does not have a god. But the book of Daniel is clear, that indeed the Antichrist does, honor a god. 
the God of forces. But in his estate shall he honour the God of forces and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honour with gold, and silver, and with precious stones, and pleasant things. Other translations render it the God of fortresses. The Antichrist honours the God of fortresses, and war. A God who defends fortresses, and armies. But who is this God? He is Allah. The God of Jihad and the God of war. The God of the armies of Islam. Allah is the one who told Muhammad to go out spreading Islam by war and force. Indeed, the only God of war today is Allah, the God of Jihad. And just like Antiochus, declared himself to be Zeus's manifestation. So too, all the Islamic Antichrist, declare that he is Allah's manifestation, or mouthpiece. 2 Thessalonians 2 For he will oppose every so-called God or object of worship, and will put himself above them all. He will even go in and sit down in God's temple and claim to be God. Muslims believe in one they call, the Imam Mahdi. The Islamic Messiah, who will rule the world, from the Temple Mount. When the Islamic Antichrist takes his seat in God's temple, and proclaims he is God, this will be a sign to Muslims that this man is the Mahdi, whom they have been waiting for. And his coming will be attended by signs and wonders, to deceive the Muslims, into believing he is the Islamic Messiah. At that point, Jesus warned that false prophets would appear, trying to deceive God's people. Then, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah. Or, look, there he is. Do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear. They will perform miracles and wonders, in order to deceive even God's chosen people, if possible. In Daniel 7.25, the Bible says the Antichrist will try to change the times and the law. The times, literally refers to the Islamic calendar and its religious festivals, which he will force all to obey. And the law, refers to Sharia law, which he will impose on all those in his kingdom. Sharia law, is the same law, which undermines women, in Islam. And this explains perfectly why the Antichrist does not care about the desires of women. Neither shall he regard, the desires of women. Because under Islamic law, women are treated worse than animals, and even beaten publicly, by men. They are forced to wear, the hijab. And many women have even been put to death, after becoming victims of rape. Or beheaded when they've been accused of adultery, by men. Women truly have no rights under Sharia law. Now you can see, why the Bible stresses the point, that the Antichrist doesn't care, about the desires of women. The Antichrist will demand, just like Antiochus did, that all Christians and Jews worship his God, Allah and will make it unlawful to practice any other faith, other than Islam. In 1928, Egyptian Hassan Obana formed an organization called the Muslim Brotherhood. In World War II, that same Muslim Brotherhood joined with Adolf Hitler to kill, indeed to exterminate Jews globally. In 1981, that same Muslim Brotherhood assassinated Egyptian President Anwar Sadat, and in 2011, that same Muslim Brotherhood overthrew Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak for the express purpose to establish the Islamic Caliphate in Egypt and eventually spread Sharia law globally. Astonishingly, in April of 2012, that same Jew-hating, Christian-hating Muslim Brotherhood was welcomed into our country, the United States of America, into our capital, Washington, D.C., by President Barack Hussein Obama. And not only did he welcome this organization that ought to be declared a terrorist organization, but he gave them 1.5 billion taxpayer dollars to continue their Islamic onslaught in the Middle East. In May of 2012, that same Muslim Brotherhood comes to Tampa, Florida with the express purpose of continuing the cultural jihad to eventually turn the United States of America into an Islamic State. In Washington, D.C., August 31 through September 3rd of 2012, 
ISNA, their national convention, their East Coast convention in Tampa, and then the last day of the Republican convention, they start their national convention to tell the federal government the Muslim Brotherhood is here. Your president welcomed us in D.C. He gave us $1.5 billion. We are now in Washington, D.C. And when that convention ends, and that convention will have every unindicted terrorist you can imagine as a speaker, when that convention ends on September 3rd, the Democratic convention begins in Charlotte, North Carolina. Our sources tell us tactically the Muslim Brotherhood through ISNA decided at that specific time to form a consolidation with the Democratic Party to assist them in re-electing President Barack Obama. Why in the world would the Muslim Brotherhood want to get President Barack Obama re-elected? They see President Obama as the president most likely to assist them in establishing their global caliphate. Why? You remember in June of 2009, just a few months after President Obama was elected, he went to Cairo, Egypt, to give his first speech and to reach out to the Muslim Brotherhood and the Islamic community. He did that in Cairo, Egypt, where Hassan al-Banna formed the Muslim Brotherhood in 1928. Number two, $1.5 billion. The reason why the Muslim Brotherhood wants President Obama re-elected is because he will provide money for them, taxpayer money, to assist them in turning some of these Middle East countries into Islamic states controlled by the Muslim Brotherhood. Point number three, why the Muslim Brotherhood wants President Obama re-elected is Palestine. You see, the Muslim Brotherhood started Hamas. Hamas runs Gaza, Judea, Samaria, the West Bank. These two pieces of dirt comprise what the Islamic world views as Palestine. This is why the Muslim Brotherhood is implementing their infiltration and influence operation in the United States in the Democratic Party. The Obama administration has changed the map on Israel. There was an administrative video that was posted on the website at whitehouse.com and they basically showed the map here without the capital of Israel and it's actually changed the map has changed if you look at this really close I'll do a zoom in here you can see it's different and then a story comes out today check this story out here Israel has confirmed its new government Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel is ready for a historic compromise with Palestinians so we've got Obama coming with this historic compromise and this changed map of Israel. Along with the fact that chemical weapons are now being used in Syria, confirmed, at least 30 people have been killed. I think that Israel is back, is up against the wall, and they're dealing with a person like Obama. What else can they do? This is exactly what the book of Revelation talks about, guys. I believe we are in the last days.